night's sleep and it rained, which made it even that much more peaceful. But uh, a few of the people are still in the area. And uh, yeah, so it turns out we are in the city or town of, I think it's pronounced Ruin Noranda. Uh, apologize. <laughs> uh, and I think this area is called Granada. And we're about 45 minutes south of Duparquet, and uh, which is the whole main reason we're up here. And this is the farthest, when I get to Duparquet, it'll be the farthest north uh, in Quebec I've ever been. Prior to that, it was Chicoutimi, where um, Paul's wife, Sonia, is from. And that's where their wedding was. I'm going to get changed, freshen up, and then I'll see if there's anything between here and uh, Duparquet for breakfast. And if there is, we'll hit that up. If not, then I guess chances are there's a breakfast place close by here. But I uh, always like those little country spots and that would be kind of fun. One cool thing about this new setup is the fact that all the cogs and chain are on the other side of the bike. When I had the bike on this side of the van, I was always worried about touching the greasy chain on my clothing and stuff. So. This setup right now is uh, working and uh, we save money on fixing a door because who wants to spend money on an old van when that door works perfectly fine and so does that one. All right, let's get changed. Glad it stopped raining. It's got a QR code on this truck camper van RV just looked on the map not a whole lot of breakfast places going north and in Duparquette there's only like one trip chip truck or something no restaurants at all um, but there's this place, I'm gonna butcher this name, I apologize, Alo Man Coco. Just looked it up, it's probably pronounced Alo, which means hi, <laughs> Man Coco. All right, <laughs> hope they got some good breakfast. I bet they do. In 600 meters, turn right onto 15 Eru. Can't turn right on a red in Quebec. Just a heads up. Right through a stop sign. <laughs> Hello, Mancoco. On the left. Looks like a breakfast place for sure. Big egg on the front. Hello. Uh, this one? Yeah. Merci. What are these milkshakes I got? Fraps. New milkshakes. Cool. All right. Wish me luck. <laughs> we might have to go buy pictures. No, it looks like they have English and French at the same time. No wine, definitely coffee. Just gonna do a regular coffee. Lots of milkshakes this place has got. Ooh, signature brunch. Eggs Benny. Oh, they've got a crepe. Signature brunch. Coco, Choco Coco Deluxe. I don't, I don't think I want chocolate for breakfast. Kind of had that. Oh, it looks like a banana pancake in there. Looks like banana pieces. Look at these casseroles. Eggs on top of sausage and bacon, potatoes maybe. Old fashioned ham, bacon, sausage, cheddar, and Swiss. I think we're gonna do that. Looks freaking to me. Oh, look at the French toast. Since we're gonna come back, maybe we should do French toast. 
You get it? <laughs> yeah, let's do French toast. Why not? We'll do bananas. Hello. Bonjour. Uh, bien? Um, coffee? Coffee? And bananas and French toast. Merci. Check that out. They're all whisks. That'd be an expensive lamp. We got our coffee. On both sides. Aww. We got 2% milk and cream. I like cream. That's the best. smells like cinnamon and uh, you can smell those bananas for sure it looks fantastic I am definitely gonna be full after this I'm gonna have to get some syrup though that's crazy looking mercy yeah now we're good Satisfying or what? Oh boy, that looks amazing. There we go. Follow the stream. Follow the stream. Uh, I'm loving this close up. Let me know if you love the close ups. Oh yeah, that is a lot of stuff in this bucket. Unbelievable. Even give you a better knife to cut through this. Oh my gosh! It's fantastic. Yep. Did a really good job. Uh, I got it. Sure, we're good. Look how thick that is, people. Nice thick French toast. Banana. I'm glad I found this place. Almost lost banana. Good morning, Quebec. Looks like I get the clean plate award once again. some water to wash all that sweet down when I'm done. My coffee first. All done here, time to head north to do parquet. That place was great. If you're ever in Quebec, go to Alo Moncoco. Typing in du parquet, so it's 37 minutes. Start drive. And away we go. Hope it stops raining in the next half an hour. That'd be great.
So I called my uncle John, uh, who is my dad's older brother, and uh, he said they lived on, I'm pretty sure this street, but when I looked it up on Google Maps, it didn't go up to the number he said it went to. Uh, when, he, when I called him, he said, go to the top of the hill and turn at the radio hotel. So, I'm, I'm sure it's this way, but we'll keep looking around. Because that doesn't look like a hotel. We'll find it. Beautiful houses, eh? That one on the left, we just passed the red one. It's really cool. So, my grandpa's brother owned a general store in town. And, uh... So, I guess both both families lived here. And one uh, worked in the mines and the other one worked in, at his store. had an idea. There's a, I just passed the post office and hopefully uh, they speak English. Parlez-vous anglais? And uh, they might be able to help me with the address. Pretty little town. Huge street for the main street. Not a whole lot of activity. Parlez-vous anglais? Un peu. Oh, great. Thank you. Bye. Bye. That door is heavy, man. <laughs> well, unfortunately, she said uh, they've changed a lot of stuff around here. And uh, chances are that house no longer exists. Uh, 79 doesn't exist that street only goes up to 41 or something so well, at least i'm in the town I, I would like to go and take a peek around that mine and uh there's a couple other buildings let's let's go check it out there's a little uh chip truck or fry stand whatever you want to call it uh, that's the only build building in town that serves food i i'm pretty sure oh here's a, a bell so I read through all this. Luckily, there's English and French. Uh, but in 1932, the uh, Betty Gold Mine was a promising thing to all the European uh, people that came to Canada, like my, my grandma and grandpa. Uh, so, and basically from 1932 and onward, the gold mine was open and it was a promising gold mine. Uh, and then there was a, a, a preacher who, or a priest, who went from two towns and then in like in 1935, he was appointed to be the priest in this town. Uh, and then in 1936, the ironworks, the Wabi ironworks produced two bells and for the gold mine and they put one up at the church uh, in, in this town. So, and, and it apparently started not sounding very well at one point. And so they uh, took it down and then put it at the entrance, the east entrance to the town. Really cool. So there's the gold mine up ahead. And again, I'm not sure what year the accident happened, but because of that accident and, and many men dying in that um, mining accident, my grandma said, no more, you can't work there anymore. So they all packed up and moved to, I guess, Montreal or Toronto. I know they lived on George Street in downtown Toronto for a while. I remember my dad talking about that, but I'm not sure what age they moved from here to there. Here's the uh, 
entrance to the mine, but it's closed, barbed wire, do not enter. <laughs> no trespassing. Good thing I got the drone footage. That would've been so cool to get up close, check out where my grandfather worked. Very, very pretty houses here in Dupart Gat. They even have a golf course, it's behind us. I saw this building and it looks like an old school. So it is possible my dad went to the school, but it looks like it doesn't look like it was built in the 30s. Chances are the schools that were built here in the 30s were made out of wood. And there's no sign or placard. So this is the street my dad lived on, and I'm pretty sure this is the hill my uh, uncle was talking about, or the one I just went down. But uh, the numbers of these houses are going, down here is low, and that way is high, and it, the street stops at 40 something. So we're already at 17. But they used to think this hill was huge as kids. There's the uh, main sign leading into the town. And this, again, must be the, the big hill that my uncle was talking about. So it is possible that it could be any one of these houses that they grew up in. Probably that one. <laughs> but the numbers possibly have changed. I don't know. The uh, woman in the post office, I guess, hasn't lived here that long. I'm so happy that she spoke English. See, 43 is the last house. Sorry, 47 is the last house. And he said they lived at 79. I thought I'd drive down to the lake thinking maybe this is where my dad and his brothers went fishing. Let's go, let's go take a peek. Oh my goodness. Northern Quebec. You are beautiful. Look at that pristine lake. Imagine all the fish you can catch on that. said that you visited not too long ago or yeah and you, yeah um, So right now I'm, I'm on Principal, which is like the main street, and I'm I'm heading towards the actual street that Uncle Johnny remembered, and he said there's that big hill that they used to toboggan on when they were kids. But it's not a big hill; it's just a little, it's a little dip in the road. It was, it was a big hill. Yeah, to them. When, when you can imagine when they were younger, but uh, it, it, it's not uh, it's not that big of a hill. I can't think of the name. I can. Okay, because uh, I'll give you the correct information because I, got, I went up there. I couldn't find it with Aunt, with Aunt Deanne the very first time. Right. And I went back again. Um, but in the meantime, I spoke with Mary in uh, in, Park, uh, in, the, in Niagara Falls. Right. She's a cousin, first cousin. Yes. And uh, she knew about it because the people... Uh, there had mentioned it to somebody and somehow it got back to them. Oh. I have no idea how that came about, but Mary sent me the address and a picture of the house and it's been all same house, but they've had all siding on it and all that kind of stuff. Right. Going by memory, I think it's like 39 something, but don't, don't hold me to that. Okay. I actually walked up to the door, knocked on the door and I said, well, and they're French, right? 
Yes. And, uh, half English, half French explained to him why I was there. And uh, I, I said, that room right, right to, the, to the left of us, as we were talking, I said, I was born in that room a million years ago. Right. Yeah, we had a good conversation. I took pictures at two as well. So can you, can you call me back in about five minutes? I will. Okay, and I'm going to head downstairs and uh, dig it up, okay? Thank you. Okay, Ken. Bye-bye. We'll talk to you. Bye. Bye. That is awesome. And the fact that my uh, Uncle Bob came here to do the same thing. And he was born in the house, so that's even cooler. I totally forgot about that. I do remember it now. Like the story, I've, we've, I know so many stories about Dupart Cat and, and them going blueberry picking. And, uh, you know, my Uncle John told me about this uh, hill that they would toboggan down. And so my Uncle Bob son thinks it's maybe 38. So that's 38 and there's no 39. There's 43 and 47. So I'm, I am bet it's this one. I'm, I'm willing to bet. And the fact that, you know, they were toboggan down. So they might live at the top of this, this hill. So, and he said it has new siding on it. But again, he, the last time he was here was a while ago. So is it 38? I think so. L Lafayre Street? Yeah. And it's like a white building with the front door facing right by the road yeah a little, it's a little bungalow and it's and it's it's built on the hill so it kind of like has like almost a second story kind of on the back yes yeah, yeah. okay so yeah. and it's yeah it's right at the top it's pretty much the first house at the after your turn uh, so it's uh white uh, uh with siding some kind of siding on it Mm -hmm. but, but that's the one. Well, there's a lot of history there, uh, yeah. for sure. Long story short, Grandpa, uh, that's when we were all living in Duparquette, and, and uh, Grandpa was working in, in the BD gold mines down up underneath. Yeah. And he used to drill the holes uh, un underground, and then he'd leave there, then they'd pack it with dynamite, blow the dynamite, and then that, that was his job, right? Wow. So, he uh, then Zoli then was old enough, and he started to work in the mines as well. So uh, the story goes, uh, Grandpa, a buddy of his, uh, said, "Look, will you take my shift? Uh, I'll take your shift tonight, and you take my shift tomorrow because I, I, they wanted to swap." So Grandpa said, "Sure, okay, fine. You, you go ahead. You take my shift, and I'll take your shift tomorrow." So that very day there was a cave-in and, and eight or nine mi miners were, were killed underground wow. with grandpa if he hadn't switched shifts with the guy wow and then grandma said that's and, it uh, that's when <laughs> grandma said that's it i'm not going to have my husband and my my son uh, buried underground here Jeez. and they packed up everything packed up one vehicle they had an old caddy lasalle uh uh, sedan, I guess, and packed up everything that they could and came to Toronto. That's 1945. They weren't supposed to do that during the war. You're not supposed to move. Right. And, uh, but they, they did anyway. Grandma, Grandma said, we're out of here. I don't care. Yeah. So that's how we got to Toronto. Okay. Well, thank you very much for your information. Anytime, buddy. And if you're, if you're ever in this area, you know, feel free to drop in. Just all you have to do is just phone to make sure I'm home. Of course. And, uh, I usually am. I, and I'd be, I'd be, it'd be nice to see you. For sure. I'll, 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 I'll make it sooner than later. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Kenneth. And have a good day and, and, and work hard. Make lots of money. <laughs> Love you, Uncle Bob. Love you too. See Bye. ya. Bye. Bye. So that was awesome. Sorry about that, guys. Got a little choked up there. Haven't talked to some of my family in a long time, so it was really nice talking to my Uncle John, my Uncle Bob, and a bunch of my cousins to try and figure this out. So uh, if I hadn't come up on that fishing trip, I wouldn't have come here because it's like seven hours away from my house. And just to drive up here just to look around and go back home, uh, it was it's it's a big commitment to do that. So I'm glad I came by today. Let's go look at the house. It's 
So I guess that was the hotel they were talking about. It was called Radio Hotel, which is not Radio Hotel. And then that is the house that my dad lived in. My Uncle Bob was born in. There's probably people in there right now. I don't want to spook them out too much. But I just have to uh, just touch the house. Unbelievable. How can looking at a house make you feel so much emotion? Incredible. Well, that was very, very cool. It was emotional, it was thought-provoking for a history, and uh, I didn't know they moved in 45, um, I think I forgot to ask him what year they moved here, but Uncle Bob said he was born in 42, and uh, yeah, it was a very, very special day today. I'm glad you guys came out with me to uh, experience that with me. Can't wait to get this video out and uh, put it out to all my family. Guys, I have like a seven hour drive home. Um, I think we'll probably grab something to eat between here and there. And you're more than welcome to hang a little bit longer. Yikes. Bonjour. Merci. They got beer. Oh yeah, I gotta get beer before I go back. Beer is cheap here. So think of the size of these cans, huge cans. Yeah, groceries. Au revoir. That feels better. That was buried on the empty. Jeez. I'm like, where's the next gas station? Nowhere to be seen until I saw this little place. Perfect. That awful feeling of, I think I'm gonna run out of gas and I'm very far away from the next gas station or not knowing where the next gas station is and thinking you're definitely gonna run out of gas. And then all of a sudden you see the gas station, you fill up feel relaxed again. Whew. Ever got that feeling? I bet you have. Before we go any further, I need more coffee. Hello. Hello. Large coffee, super play, two cream. Uh, we need a little bit of a sleeve. I have sensitive hands. Have five and a half hours to go. Let's get going. I, I think we're gonna go uh, head to North Bay and do a restaurant that we missed when we went there. We went there on a day that uh, was at the end of the summer and it just so happened the restaurant shut down on the day I got there uh, because they uh, just shut down to let their employees have a day off because they worked so hard throughout the whole summer and then it was like the first week of school. So they uh, gave all the employees the day off. So. Let's go there, it's like a Mexican place. I can't remember what it's called off the top of my head, but I'll punch it in and we'll head there for lunch. All right, looked it up, it's called Mr. Poncho. It's about three hours away. We'll get there at 317, according to my Waze app. So let's get going. I've got a coffee to keep me awake. And I got you guys to keep me company. Let's do it. I got, I got to get beer before I head back to the high prices of Ontario beer. Here they're called SAQ Selection. You can do your own taste test. Swipe your Visa card, grab a glass, and enjoy. Cool. 
Got sinks, fridges, more wine. Ooh, somebody left a card there. That's not good. So Red Stripe is $2.95 for six. That is insane. Oh, Chuck Var. So this is mainly a wine and liquor store. I thought they also had beer, but uh, she said, just go to your local grocery store. And that's where you get your beer. Totally gapped on that one. <laughs> just realized this is where I slept last night, <laughs> but it wasn't open, I don't think, this morning. So apparently Walmart doesn't sell beer, but the IGA does, just around the corner. And there is our IGA. Hope you got beer. All right, found the beer section. And they apparently have really good deals on big cases of beer. Whoops, big water spot. Sapporo, $21.99 for 12. So I'm guessing this is a pretty good deal. It's 26 bucks for tw uh, 20 beers. At home, it's 24 dollars 24 15 for 12 tall boys, but I'm not sure how much beer that is compared to these are the regular size cans. And I like buying the tall boys, and they don't have tall boys here. I guess it's 220 packs. Let's go. So 40 beers came to uh, 64.06. Again, those aren't American prices, those are Quebec prices. Americans, let us know how much 40 beers would cost. And other people from around the world. Made it to North Bay, and uh, Mr. Poncho is just up ahead on the right. There's Mr. Poncho. Let's go get it. Hello, how are you? I'm good, how are you? All right, number one burrito, taco, and quesadilla. Let's go burrito, beef, taco, chicken, and quesadilla chicken, I guess. I guess mango would be fantastic. How long has this place been around? Four years. Four years? No, I've got a, I've got an over. Mucho gracias, señorita. <laughs> oh boy. In for a treat, people. In for a treat. I have been looking forward to this for a whole year. And now I am back. And it smells amazing. Oh. I think that's the burrito. Can we have a napkin? One napkin? I don't know. Looks like a four napkin meal, at least. Oh boy, oh my gosh, that's gotta be a pound and a half? Maybe two pounds. Killer! Oh yeah, I, I told her I had my own opener. Get out the camper opener. Get out our mango. Let us know in the comments below what would be your drink of choice. Uh, when you're eating Mexican food. Mm, I love mango. I remember eating fresh mango uh, the first time I went to Cuba. And uh, there was a lady there. If you tipped her a buck, she'd always pick you the biggest, ripest mango. And then she'd cut it in half. And then slice, 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 slice. And then fold it inside out. What a great part of a breakfast. Anyway, so it is... Uh, after taxes and tip and everything, it was thirty nine sixty six. So the subtotal of the food, the food was twenty nine twenty five. Again, it's a full on burrito, full on uh, quesadilla, and a taco. And she uses the white um, corn tortilla. My mistake in the last video. I was just. I've had that nice thick. Oh, I'm sure some of you guys know exactly what I'm gonna say. There's like a nice thick yellow corn tortilla. And when I first saw that, I'm like, okay, that's a corn tortilla. And whenever I see, 
a white tortilla like this. It just looks like a corn tortilla, I mean, a flour tortilla to me. I'm sorry, guys. Anyway, here we go. Again, I'm not a food critic. I'm a YouTuber who loves to eat. Here we go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That is beautiful. Yummy. We've got a sauce too. What would you eat first? I'm thinking I'm eating the right thing first because it'll get cooled down the, the quickest. I forgot to go in for a close up. That's how much of a rush I'm in to eat this. Oh well. Ding, 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 ding. Okay, don't fall apart any more than you already just did. Mm. I'd sauce that up a little bit more. It's a little dry without putting more sauce on it. I'm just afraid to put too much of that sauce on it. Mm. That is very tasty. Let's put some more sauce into that little dry area right there. Okay, here we go. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so good. Mm -hmm. mm. And another sauce. I had to open the windows a little bit. It's really hot. I'm going in for an extreme close up after I already ate some stuff. That taco was amazing. Look at this burrito. Are you kidding? Look at it. Toasted. All like it just looks like a big, huge lump of bread. Go, big, big, or a big clump of dough ready to go into the oven for to make bread. And over here is our quesadilla. Again, nicely toasted. There's that sauce. Wow, it is killer. And there's the remnants of my taco. Let's see if we can open this up. I doubt it. Well, maybe. I don't know. There's a lot of stuff in there. Wow. Wow. Okay, let's start eating. I'm gonna have to take a couple bites of this quesadilla first. And then we'll go for the burrito next, I guess. And this just looks like a big, <laughs> it's like a big taco, really. It's like a taco, extra cheese. Mmm. Let me know if you would have agreed with the meat choices on the different items. Uh, I think I'd prefer chicken on a quesadilla and beef in a burrito. Mmm, that is cheesy. Got the melted cheese on the inside. It's making it nice, nice and yummy. Oh, that's good. That is good. I think I chose the right meat for this too, for sure. Quesadilla, nice. Mango, burrito. I'm guessing you'd wanna kind of fold this around so it doesn't all pour out one end. There we go, look at that. I'm like a master. Oh, toasted. Some places will uh, toast it on all four sides. I guess if I asked her if she, if I, if she could have done that for me, she probably would have. I've just heard other people in other restaurants saying, oh, you gotta toast all four sides. It just takes longer, obviously. Look at the size of that thing. Scratch it, sniff it, the rest is mine. Mm. That's a lot of food. Mm. All three things are really, really good. The quesadilla, for some reason, it has this, I guess because of the cheese, it's all melted. I really enjoyed that quesadilla over the taco. Taco was great. Quesadilla was better. And I'm debating now between these two. Hang on. Mm. 
the burrito and the quesadilla are tied. Again, depending on how hungry you are, depending on which one you want. Because this is going to be a beast to try and wolf down. I probably could do everything, no problem. It'd be better to share it though. Look at all those toppings. Mmm. And the flour tortilla. It's nice and fresh. Yummy. Let's try this. There we go. Just a big doppling right there. Yes, I said doppling. Mmm. <laughs> Yeah, definitely do it with that hot sauce. And it's not killer either. That thing's dynamite. I just checked on my uh, phone how long it's going to take me to get home. It's going to take two hours and 44 minutes. So between now and December, if you guys really want me to come back here and do that steakhouse and do a stealth camp around here somewhere, so I'll drive up here, do a do the steak place, do a stealth camp, and then do another place. If you guys are from the area, excuse me. <coughs> it was that good, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, if you know of another restaurant that you really want me to try, I forget what the steak place is called, but when I came up here last year, uh, the head chef phoned in sick and they didn't have enough staff to do takeout so and there was too busy and noisy in there to do sit in anyway i'm going to finish the rest of this off and then head home to the wife sit back watch tv and and keep each other company so guys thank you very very much for hanging out with me on this special day seeing where my dad lived eating an amazing breakfast uh almost running out of gas and then making it back down to north bay to eat at Mr. Poncho uh, Mexican food restaurant that we've been trying to do for a year. So uh, again, thanks for all your support on this channel. I just have to take another bite. I wanna thank every single one of you guys for watching my videos, liking and commenting. It means a lot to me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And of course my channel members for all your monthly support and my supporters over on Patreon, you guys rock. If you love this video and you want to show your support for me doing these videos just for you, hit it with a thumbs up, ding, 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 ding. But if you're still hungry for more, check out that playlist I dumped down over there and we'll see you over there. Bring your hunger.